everyone, I'm Grace Palacio, your future educator. Our lesson for today is about building on Peter Oliva's 10 axioms for curriculum designers. We already have a background knowledge about what curriculum development is. Curriculum development is a decision-making process. When dealing with curriculum development or even problems with the curriculum, it is useful to have a set of principles that can serve as guidelines for deciding what is good, right, and reasonable. According to Oliva, curriculum principles are derived from empirical data, experimental data, the folklore of curriculum, and common sense. Principles based on science alone can be rigid and restrictive. The use of common sense in making curricular decisions can also be distrusted. Therefore, judgment and common sense are necessary in making curricular decisions. Oliva states that curriculum principles may be viewed as whole truth, partial truth, or hypothesis. But instead of taking terms of whole truths and partial truths, we might be more accurate if we speak of actions. But what is an axiom anyway? Well, the College Dictionary defines an axiom as a maxim widely accepted on its intrinsic merit. It is a statement accepted as true as the basis for argument or inference. So now we already have an idea of what axiom is. Now, let us identify the 10 general axioms of curriculum development. Oliva offers several generally accepted axioms that provide a frame of reference for curriculum developers seeking ways to improve curriculum and solve curriculum problems. As future curriculum implementer, we should be familiar with these axioms and how they relate to curriculum we plan to implement. The first axiom deals with the inevitability of change. Curriculum change is inevitable, necessary, and desirable. Change means improvement, and one of the characteristics of a curriculum is being dynamic. We encounter a lot of changes in our lives, and as well as problems that we need to respond. Therefore, there is a need to embrace changes also in the curriculum in order to respond to the contemporary problems in our lives. Examples of these changes are Changes of values, family, morality, culture diversity, and microelectronics revolution. As we observe them in the 21st century, we both are not using blackboards more often, but instead, we use PowerPoint presentations to present in class. Change in the form of responses to contemporary problems must be a foremost in the minds of every educator. Axiom 2. The curriculum not only reflects, but is also a product of its time. So, Axiom 2 is corollary of the first Axiom. Some curriculum changes too quickly, and others are slow. So, the curriculum responds to and is changed by factors such as social forces, philosophical positions, psychological principles, accumulating knowledge, and educational leadership at its moment in history. Example of this is our situation today because of the pandemic. For the safety of all, the, the curriculum shifts into using other platforms such as online classroom or online classes. Action 3. Curriculum changes made in an earlier period of time can exist concurrently with newer curriculum changes. Curriculum is concurrent change, meaning that the changes that was made earlier can affect the change that is made, being made now. But they can also coexist side by side. So just like now, with the emerging use of technology, the curriculum changes. However, traditional learning can still coexist and it is still applicable to our generation. 
Just because we made any changes, it doesn't mean we will have to throw everything, right? Action 4. Curriculum change depends on the people to implement the change. Who are the implementers of the curriculum? That's right, the teachers. Teachers are the implementer of the curriculum. Therefore, teachers should be able to meet the objectives while targeting the interests of the student. And also, teachers have to be empowered and they have to know that what they think makes a difference to other people. So Alice Mill wrote that the nature of curriculum change should be seen for what it really is, a type of social change, change in people, and not mere change on paper. Action 5. Curriculum development is a cooperative group activity. Curriculum is a cooperative endeavor. Any changes in the curriculum, the stakeholders must be involved with it. For Curriculum change is a result of cooperative endeavor on the parts of groups. You can't just create any curriculum in the school by yourself, right? Action 6. Action 6 is basically a decision-making process. A curriculum designer needs to decide what contents to teach, the philosophy or point of view to support, how to differentiate for special populations, what methods or strategies to use to deliver the curriculum, and what type of school organization best supports the curriculum. So for example, how are we going to group the students? Are we going to group them by age or heterogeneously? The decisions for people with disabilities should be mainstream. So should they use special aid or have special programs. So in action 6, you have to make a method that you're going to use. Action 7 is a continuous process. Curriculum is never completely developed and no curriculum meets the needs of everyone. As the needs of learners change, as society changes, and as new knowledge and technology appear, the curriculum must change. Therefore, continuous monitoring examination, evaluation, and improvement of the curricula are needed. As what the first action stated, change is inevitable and things are always changing. Therefore, we can say that curriculum is never completely developed. Action 8. Action 8 is a comprehensive process. The curriculum should be holistic. Curriculum development should not only be a hit or miss proposition, but should involve careful planning and be supported by adequate resources, needed time, and sufficient personnel. Every aspect of the curriculum must be taken into consideration. Oliva advises curriculum planners to be aware of the impact of curriculum development not only to on the students, teachers, and parents. Action 9. The curriculum needs a systematic development and should be made comprehensive by holistically looking onto the whole canvas. It is more effective than trial and error. So a set of procedures or models for the curriculum should be established in advance and be known and accepted by all who are involved in the process. The model should outline the sequences of steps to be followed for the development of the curriculum. The last action. Curriculum development starts from where the curriculum is. Most curriculum planners begin with existing curriculum. Oliva advises planners to hold fast to that which is good. What has come before should not be carelessly tossed aside. So we have to think about the beginning of the curriculum development process as a reorganization pre-existing ideas and modes of delivery. Remember in our first year, when we were tasked to make our own philosophy of education, diba we, we were tasked to use the existing philosophies as our references or inspiration 
in creating our own and new philosophy. An existing design is a good starting point for any teacher who plans to enhance and enrich a curriculum. So we already mentioned 10 actions of curriculum development. That's the end of my topic. Thank you so much for listening. God bless.